Um, and biophilia has, in my estimation, often been the, what's the missing link in approaches to sustainable design. So biophilic design is simply biophilia in the built environment. It's buildings and constructive landscapes that, that foster our physical and mental well-being and health and performance by creating a positive connection between the people that inhabit these environments. Because basically we're talking about creating good habitat for people as a biological organism. So we're creating a positive nurturing habitat for people in places of, of, uh, that are contextually significant from a cultural and ecological point of view. And it's, in a way, you know, we're kind of going back to the future. We, we, we have to do things differently, of course, because we're in a different world. But uh, biophilic, biophilia and biophilic design, to the extent that it is a biological tendency, has been an intuitive um, expression of our relationship to the world about us, uh, you know, as long as we've been a species. And if you look at some of our most revered buildings, uh, ones that we do, uh, develop these strong emotional attachments to it and sustain and retain and restore generation after generation. You see that they're replete with biophilic features. That is, they, as Judith Kerwagen said, they have the essence of natural objects without being exact copies. They draw and design principles of natural forms. So the cathedral looks very much like a cathedral of, of, uh, of trees, or if you look at even at landscape level, a picture of Florence has many different biophilic attributes, uh, without getting into the specifics of it, that engender a sense of affiliation, connection, appreciation, and a value of that environment. And often you know biophilic design, even if you can't put your finger on what it is that um, is, makes you feel better in one place than another. So this was an interesting study of a hospital emergency room admission. It's the same. These two pictures of the same room, the same uh, awful windowless room. Uh, the other one, the, the previous, before they went through this renovation, they had a great deal of, uh, of, of uh, difficulties with aggression and acting out behavior and stress and hostility. It's a very emotionally difficult situation in the emergency room. Patients, people waiting there were conflicting with one another and with staff. Uh, they had to do something, they didn't have the the resources to build a whole new um, a, a room, it's still the same windowless room, but they in, uh, inserted many biophilic attributes and they found uh, higher comfort, lower stress levels. Um, oh, 15 minutes, so that's good. So here's some, mostly pictures now. Uh, so here's just some examples that intuitively sort of jump out at you of biophilically different design, you know, that. That may be uh, uncomfortable, but it's the place where many of us work in these windowless cubicles and uh, biophilically responsive uh, design, um, biophilic and non biophilic office space, um, classrooms, um, hospital rooms. And you, you, you just have to see these, and where would you rather be? Um, the picture of uh, Kuchet uh, Hospital. Uh, this astonishing number of, uh, of plants and animals with seemingly significant therapeutic benefits. I say seemingly because I don't think there's been any any studies to actually measure the impact uh, beyond um, people like me going there and loving it. 